This is a block diagram of a professional motor control system. So let's take a look how this works and fill in the blanks. First of all, here we have a reference position of the motor coming in and we're going to compare that to a measured position of the motor. The reference is coming from whatever we want. Maybe we're running a CNC machine and we're trying to make the tool follow a certain path. So that's the reference position coming in. We have a measured position and then here we have the motion controller. You have different options for what you might put in this box. Um, Common choice might be a PID motion controller, or maybe you want to do some feed forward control in addition to the feedback control that the PID gives you. So what comes out of the motion controller then is a torque command, what it wants the motor to do. The motion controller only cares about physical things, mechanical things. So it's going to send out a torque command but we know that since we're going to be using a brush DC motor, that torque is proportional to current. So it's the same thing as sending out a current command. And now we're going to compare our commanded current to a measured current. And so here we're going to get a current error. And we're going to have another controller that's trying to make the current track the desired current. And this is often a PI controller. And the output of the PI controller is going to be a PWM duty cycle. And the PWM for controlling motors is typically in the range of 10 to 40 kilohertz. Let's say that it's a 20 kilohertz PWM coming out. So the PWM is what goes to the H bridge. Remember, these are all low current, low voltage signals. The H bridge converts that now to high current, high voltage. So what comes out of the H bridge is current. And that goes into the motor. And then what comes out of the motor is the actual position. That position is then measured by an encoder. And the encoder uh, puts out pulses that are out of phase with each other that tell us how the motor is moving, that needs, those pulses need to be counted so we know how far the motor has rotated clockwise or counterclockwise. So this is a counter and then from that counter comes the measured position to our motion controller. The last box that we haven't filled in here is a current sensor. So we've got something sensing the current that the age bridge is actually sending to the motor and that goes back to our PI controller. So you can see we have two feedback loops here. We have this inner loop and then we have this larger outer loop. The inner loop is concerned with electronics basically, making sure that we have the right current going through the motor. And because it's all electronics, the time scale for it is much faster. Uh, in other words, the time constants associated with changing currents through a motor is much lower, it's a much faster time scale than it is for motion control where we have physical elements involved. Uh, and so for that reason, this inner loop typically runs at a higher frequency than the outer loop. So maybe the outer loop changes its torque command or current command once every, say, five milliseconds, then the inner loop is going to be running much faster than that trying to make sure that the current reaches that level before we go on to the next current command here. So for example, this inner loop here could be running at five kilohertz. So that means since our PWM is at 20 kilohertz, that means uh, we have the same PWM duty cycle for four periods, then we recalculate the PI controller 
and then we update the PWM duty cycle. So this inner loop is trying to control the current at five kilohertz. This outer loop is going to be running slower, dominated by any mechanical time constants. And in this example, let's say that this outer controller is running at 200 hertz. So the goal here is to, once you've built your electronics, you have the H bridge, and you've got the current sensor, and you've got the counter and encoder, you want to build the PI controller, and whatever the motion controller is here, uh, maybe PID for the motor, so that you get good tracking of the reference position, that your measured position follows the reference position closely. We can also box this up according to what's in the microcontroller. So everything inside of this dashed box is inside the microcontroller. So here, this interface with the H bridge, this is an output compare, because that's where we've got the PWM. The current sensor is going to be something that returns an analog voltage that is proportional to the amount of current going through the motor. So this is going to be an ADC input to the PIC. And the counter here, that's actually a separate chip. It's a PIC, really. It's a microcontroller that its only job is to read the encoder counts and to provide the encoder counts to the other microcontroller. And the way it's going to do that is over a communication channel that uses SPI, Serial Peripheral Interface. 